Hello, my name is Major Brendan Herbeck and I'm with Over the Horizons Online Journal. Today I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing Superintendent, United States Air Force Academy, General Jay Silveria. General, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to uh, spend some time with us and answer some questions. Well, thanks, sir. It's good to be here. Sir, you have a unique perspective being a uh, Deputy uh, Air Component Commander in the Middle East. Uh, in your opinion, where do you see uh, America's military and what do you think their role is going to be in the next five to ten years? Well, uh, it, it was a unique experience being the Deputy Air Component Commander, but I, I, the unique aspect of it was that I got to see the American military doing all of the things that it does well. I mean, I got to see them in direct combat engaged offensive operations, but I also got to see them American military that is building up other militaries, that is, that is also shoring up uh, governments and developing security atmospheres for governments to, to continue to grow in, in examples of Afghanistan and, uh, and in Iraq. I got to see uh, the role of military of special operators as well as conventional forces. So I got to see a, a very capable military that is involved in, in all aspects uh, of the Middle East. So if I was asked to, to look out into the future, uh, I think there are some aspects there that I saw over my time that will continue to develop. Uh, one of those is certainly the idea of, of us developing other militaries. Um, certainly in the region of the Middle East, we want to uh, help those militaries grow so they can be more capable. So uh, I, I think the actions that we were taking as an Air Force, but uh, other services, we're doing the, the very same thing to, within the military. But also uh, teaching us to, uh, to, to react to uh, partnered and surrogate forces. I think as a military, we're learning. Uh, how we react to a lot of the forces that were on the ground that were not necessarily government forces in uh, Iraq and Syria, as an example. So that glimpse as the Air Component Commander, I got to see some of the elements uh, of the future of, of, uh, of our military. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the underlining tones I hear is multi-domain mm -hmm. operations. And right. It's a hot topic, uh, especially with the Army and the Air right. Force uh, lately. Where did you see multi-operations in that current fight in the Middle East? Well, I mean, I could talk, Herbs, I could talk forever about multi-domain because that was how we functioned. I mean, it, the, no operation happened if there was not uh, cyber, if there wasn't space, if there wasn't uh, uh, RPA, if there wasn't a fighter, if there wasn't bomber, if there wasn't large wing, uh, large wing intelligence uh, platforms. No operation happened that didn't involve all, all of those aspects in some way. So, so if you're going to involve all of those aspects, then, then it up most important that they are synchronized. And so the ability to be in a chaos of the 21st century, uh, an air operations center today, has to have the ability to roam through those multi-domain operations. I mean, you have to be comfortable of using cyber, of synchronizing cyber, and cyber has to be comfortable with synchronizing with space and kinetic uh, as, as well as, you know, non-kinetic uses of aircraft and information warfare. And it all has to be synchronized because, and that's the way that the multi-domain uh, operations. We talk about space and cyber and kinetic, non-kinetic, and all of those aspects. But to me, what I saw firsthand was that the multi-domain aspect will never be what we want it to be without the synchronization that's required to integrate all of those together. It's, it's the sum of the parts are, is, is much greater than those individual aspects, and that happens through the in integration. Yes, sir. Um, with your experiences in the Middle East, how did it uh, prepare you to become the superintendent of the United States Air Force Academy and to train the next leaders in the military? Well, uh, I got to see the 21st century battlefield. So the, the multi-domain aspect that I just described, the 21st century battlefield that has cyber and space and RPA and big wing and fighter and bomber, also has allied, also has uh, coalition, uh, also has third party uh, uh, players such as, uh, you know, in the case of Syria, Russia was involved and, and, uh, and other, other regional actors. My point is that that environment was intensely complex. And so that's the prism that I view the preparation of our second lieutenants. 
is that they have to be ready to handle the complex environment of the 21st century. So seeing that is the way that I think that has brought me at the Academy to approach things about the 21st century battlefield. Yes, sir. One thing uh, some of our audience might not know is you mm -hmm. were the first general officer to be certified in the F-35. Mm -hmm. Uh, very capable platform. Right. Um, where do you see the F-35's role is in information warfare in tomorrow's right. battle? Right. Uh, I as almost uh, almost exactly like my answer previously about an opportunity to see the future, an opportunity to see the complex battlefield of the 21st century. The F-35 is another glimpse there, and it's not as much about the platform. It's about a transition for the Air Force from industrial age warfare into information age warfare. The F-35 takes unprecedented amounts of, of information off of the battlefield, as well as can distribute unprecedented amounts of information around the battlefield. It, uh, because it is really an information platform. I mean, I, you would find yourself flying e even in training in range environments uh, where you were you spent more time dispersing the information, receiving and dispersing the information to others than you did actually executing uh, your own aspects of the mission. So uh, we need to learn how to deal with that. And so I think that F-35, that transitioning to information warfare, as it takes on that information, as it disperses it to all of the other players, that's truly the difference about the F-35. It isn't, you know, certainly the stealth aspect or some of the, uh, uh, the munitions aspect that the F-35 will bring. It's the, the ability to receive information and, and take information and then disperse information out uh, to the rest of the battlefield. Along the same lines of, as you asked about uh, seeing the 21st century battlefield and then through the prism, through that prism, I want to prepare our lieutenants. It's the same way with the F-35, that through that same prism, I want to think about second lieutenants that are preparing for an information age warfare that is different as we transition out of the industrial age. And the F-35 is going to lead us through that and will be an important part of that, but it's really about the information warfare. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you think uh, the Air Force could do better to prepare commanders for tomorrow? Well. I think uh, I think one of the the greatest the I think one of the best things we can do is begin to is begin to challenge a lot of the assumptions that we've made about so many things about warfare, and begin to look at what we see the 21st century uh, what we see 21st century warfare is going to be, and then if you think about this next generation of of lieutenants this next generation of junior officers that we're preparing that are going to serve that are going to that are going to execute then our officers need to, our senior officers, our commanders, need to think about in terms of bringing all of those, uh, we talk about digital natives, we talk about connected individuals, uh, they are different in what they bring, and commanders need to think in terms of empowering that and taking advantage of that, not resisting it, but taking advantage of that, so that then they can better execute in, a, in an area of future warfare. Yes, sir. Uh, my final question for you is concerning uh, the next generation of leaders. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of you know, negative attributes brought mm -hmm. up about the millennial and centennial mm -hmm. generation. Where do you think those generations are gonna take the Air Force in the mm -hmm. next 10 to 20 years? Well, uh, I get to see our 18 to 24 year olds every day. And uh, they are unbelievably sophisticated, unbelievably uh, with unbelievable depth and breadth that that we uh, never had. Uh, I think they're connected in in so many more ways, but they're also questioning and challenging what's in front of them. Uh, and I think a lot of us are taken back by that sometimes when they're when they question and challenge. And it isn't that they are questioning uh, us as individuals or us as leaders. Uh, they're questioning and challenging. And I think that what we need to do is to consider that and take that on. The sophistication that they bring and the question and the challenging, I think we have an opportunity here with this generation to empower them. And if we believe, if we believe and see that opportunity, then I think they will be the ones to bring us in an information age, the ones that will bring us up to a 21st century 
uh, battlefield because they grew up in the 21st century. And I think that they have a lot of attributes that we can learn from. And I think that's going to be their role is they're going to have to drive us and they're going to have to push us. Our role is going to be to, to empower them and to get out of their way in a lot of cases. Yes, sir. Well, General Silveria, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to answer some questions for us. Uh, we appreciate you being here and we wish you luck uh, at future uh, superintendent of the United States Air Force Academy. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right. Thanks.